okay, I know this looks bad, but we did not copy Rainbot. It was just unfortunate timing. In future videos, we will tell you when we take inspiration from a video, but this time it was just a coincidence. So please just enjoy the video. On March 18, 1984, Katsuhisa Azaki, the CEO of a Japanese confectionery company named Glico, was kidnapped by two masked men in his own home. Prior to the abduction, these same men had ransacked his mother's condo in search of a spare key to his home. The only item they took is the key. So imagine, oh, you're like, you're thinking, in his shoes, you're like, oh, all of this stuff was stolen, this and that, oh, I must be okay. And then you, f you come to find out that the only thing that was stolen was the key to your house. Izaki was taken to an old warehouse in a neighboring prefecture. The kidnappers demanded a high ransom of 1 billion yen, which equates to 4.2 million USD. Izaki was held captive for three days before escaping unscathed and hauling ass to the nearest police station. Damn, that's a lot of money. How do you escape? That's a lot of coin. This is the start of one of the most interesting, confusing, and mysterious Japanese true crime cases that has managed to remain unsolved. From kidnapping, to poisoning of candy, to even the suicide of an important figure, this case has it all. Let's begin. Arsonists began torching vehicles parked outside the Glico headquarters and destroyed the surrounding area. What follows the first of many letters from an anonymous sender. The first letter stated the following. To the stupid police. Are you idiots? What are you doing with so many people? If you were pros, you would catch us. Because you guys have such a high handicap, we're going to give you some hints. The letter went on to include the following hints. The kidnapping wasn't an inside job. The car used was gray. None of them were within the police and that they bought their food at a nearby supermarket. Even with the hints given, the investigation made no progress. A second letter was sent to Izaki Glico. In this letter, they officially dubbed themselves as the monster with 21 faces. Glico received a threatening letter signed by the monster of 21 faces. Jesus. That's still a dope, that's a scary name, that's pretty dope. It puts a good picture in your mind. For some reason I keep thinking of Akumanto. Well, that's monster with no face. Yeah, Quite the opposite. The letter was much more threatening this time, stating that they laced the company's candies with potassium cyanide. Immediately, authorities decided to pull all Glico candies from store shelves, resulting in a disastrous 20 million yen loss in profits for the company. Even more letters were sent threatening Glico that they'd continue to tamper with products. Following the letters, security cam footage caught a man placing Glico products on store shelves. However, this man remains unidentified. Another letter was sent to Izaki Glico. In a surprising turn of events, the letter only had three words. We forgive Glico. Hey, Katsu, he, he looks kind of, he's kind of a Chad, god damn. Also, what the fuck is this picture? <laughs> what picture? This. This actually, this is actually unnerving me. Like, I'm actually, like, getting chills down my Where'd phone. you find that? I just, um, typed the monster with 21 faces in Google Images. That's one of them? No. I don't know what this- it's actually unnerving me. A following letter after their apology stated the following. So when our work is done, we want to go to Europe, Geneva, Paris, London. We'll be in one of those places. Let's bring Pocky, the traveler's friend. Delicious Glico products, we're eating them too. See you in January of next year. However, the tale of the monster with 21 faces doesn't end there. At just two months after the previous letter, they began targeting three other food companies including Marudai Ham, Housefood Company, and Morinaga. In the same letter, they demanded 400k yen from Morinaga. However, the company refused, resulting in another letter. The letter was framed into a poem, suggesting to housewives that 20 of the Morinaga candy boxes spread throughout the country had been laced with potassium cyanide. The boxes this time had a label on them, warning the manufacturers of what's inside. Further testing concluded that the boxes were in fact tampered with. The police noticed that the mysterious figure tended to strike on the weekend. In turn, 20% of Japan's entire police force, roughly 40,000 officers, began to stake out supermarkets across the nation. With no progress being made, and not so much as a single suspect being identified or tried, much of the blame was thrown on the shoulders of Shoji Yamamoto, the head of the Shiga Prefecture Police. Unfortunately, he couldn't bear the weight of the blame, inevitably deciding to commit suicide by dousing his own body with kerosene and lighting himself on fire. The man burned himself to death. 
A final letter was sent out taunting the death of Yamamoto. In their final message, it read, Yamamoto of the Shiga Prefecture Police died. How stupid of him. We've got no friends or secret hiding places in Shiga. It's Yushino or Shikata who should have died. What have they been doing for as long as one year and five months? Don't let bad guys like us get away with it. There are many more fools who want to copy us. No career Yamamoto died like a man. So we decided to give our condolences. We decided to forget about torturing food making companies. If anyone blackmails any of the food making companies, it's not us, but someone copying us. We are bad guys. That means we got nothing more to do than bullying companies. It's fun to lead a bad man's life.